and we'll be talking about resetting our values. And of course, that would be with Jesus as our shepherd leading the way. Let us join together in our welcoming and gathering prayer. Loving God, center us as we worship. Prepare our hearts and help us to make room for what is important, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation moment comes from Psalm chapter 19, verse 1. The heavens declare God's glory. The sky proclaims God's handiwork. Let us take a moment and meditate upon these words. Amen. I don't know what you were thinking about during that time, but the heavens declare God's glory, the sky proclaims God's handiwork, and all I could think about was all the snow that just fell, but how beautiful it was uh, in the light. Our opening hymn this morning is page 365, Grace Greater Than Our Sin, and we will sing words one, two, and four. <laughs> Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Please be seated as we turn our hearts for prayer. God of creation, here on earth we join the throngs in heaven declaring your glory. We long to make your ways our ways as taught by Jesus. God of justice, your laws of mercy and goodness reveal your vision of peace and harmony. God of love, your son Jesus proclaims the good news of liberation for all who are hungry, poor, and oppressed. God of spirit, you call us to be accountable for living holy lives aligned with your will for the world. May we declare the gospel message of love, grace, peace, and reconciliation to the world through holy living. In the name of Jesus, our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Amen. And our next step is where he leads me. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in the heavens above, or is on the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your town. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, oppressed on the Sabbath. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that the days may be long on the land that your Lord, your God, is giving to you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. 
You shall not bear a false witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself, and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you, so that the fear of God be with you, and you will keep and will keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Our second reading is from the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. <clears throat> but I say to you, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not even withhold your shirt. Give to anyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those to whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend that and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. For the measure you give will be, will be the measure you get back. And our final reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter. <clears throat> Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of one, will pass from the law until it is all accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them, and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God.
Reverend Paul as we return to our reset series and talk about resetting our values to God's values. Saul, renamed Paul, thought he knew all about what was good and right. His value system was fully developed. He knew each and every letter of the Jewish laws. Growing up, he studied and learned the commandments of God. But even Paul, in his zest for strictly following the law, went down a path that was not one of love and caused harm and persecution to others. Paul, after standing by and watching the stoning of Stephen, is stopped on the road by a vision of the risen Jesus who chooses him for a grand purpose. And that purpose was to join Jesus' followers called the people of the way and offer the gospel message to the Gentiles. Paul, transformed by his encounter with Jesus, changed his values to God's values, which for Paul now included love and mercy. Paul changed from law to grace, from black and white of the law to living the values of love in all things. Paul, who wrote beautiful words about love in the Bible, let me speak unto you. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not ambitious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. These words are from a changed person. Saul, renamed Paul, was transformed by love, resetting his values to God's values, and was sent out into the world to change the world. And he did it by keeping his focus on the risen Jesus, being led by the Spirit, and living a life of love. As Christians, we share God's values as set forth in the Old and New Testament. In the Old Testament, we find the Ten Commandments. God gave those to the people through Moses. We can read them in the book of Exodus, or again in the book of Deuteronomy. They are a set of core values that connected them and connect us with God, allowing humankind to live with God and in peace together in community. What does it mean to live by God's Spirit and not our own? To live according to God's values and not just those of society. As children, we learned the golden rule, and hopefully it began the building blocks of God's values in us to help us to live well with others. Do you know where the golden rule is in the Bible? We already heard it once in Luke. It's also in Matthew 7, verse 12, part of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. In our NRSV translation, the golden rule goes like this. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. This verse is within the many teachings of Jesus that we follow as Christians. You could say because we learned it in our youth, it's one of the first core values that we learn. But then in adulthood, life becomes a little bit more complicated. And we can think the simplicity, simplicity of the golden rule does not fit with the decisions and choices that we need to make. And there you have our first thoughts of not being guided 
by the values of God. Today I offer that the law of God found in the Ten Commandments is a starting point for us in living a life of obedience, love, and grace aligned with the Spirit of God. Much more than a list of do's and don'ts, these commandments are a place to, it, to begin in a life of faith in relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit who lives in us. Being obedient to God is a sign of our faithfulness and devotion to Jesus as his disciples. Following God's laws reveals that we are willing to surrender ourselves to God. That we value what is good, true, and holy. As United Methodists, we have core values of our faith that make us who we are in mission and ministry together. First and foremost, as our mission statement says, we are to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And we do this by sharing God's love and nurturing a growing faith in each other. We do this by being deeply rooted in scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. That's right, the Wesley plot the ladder. We do this by celebrating the sacraments, living in love, spending time in worship and prayer, living disciplined and holy lives, and by following God's laws together. Another value we share is that of striving towards welcoming everyone in the name of Jesus, in the name that is love, in grace and in mercy. We're still working on that one, aren't we? Jesus did this by eating with sinners and welcoming sinners. He did this by loving and caring about each and every person. We do this by offering an open communion table where any and all can come and receive the gifts of God through Jesus Christ. This again is a place to start, not the only way of being inclusive. We are called to be diverse and accepting of one another because we are all made in the image of God. This is a core value that we should all share, understand, and accept. How then are we to do this? How are we to live into these values and stand by our beliefs and ideals? How are we to do a reset of our values to strive towards God's ways? Our music suggests, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in light of his glory and grace. Scripture offers us a way through the prophet Micah. In Micah 6, 8, we are to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. Values are at the core of our beliefs. Values are what we build our lives upon. Beginning as a small child, we are taught the difference between right and wrong and how we are to behave. Sadly, some learn this lesson better than others, right? And some simply forget what living a life of decency with a good set of core values is all about. How far have we strayed from what is true, right, and holy? How far down the wrong road have we gone? Are we judging others? Are we compromising our values? Have we forgotten about loving God and our neighbor, whoever that neighbor might be? Can we return to God's ways? Do we need a reset? From the times of the early churches through today, we struggle with issues that separate us rather than unite us as people of God. In Paul's time, the churches of Galatia struggled with the issue of circumcision as a way to be included. Paul stressed that was the old way under the law, not the way of grace. Paul emphasizes that everyone is brought to faith through Jesus Christ. And he says so in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. He 
says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Paul urges them to believe grace does not require the act of circumcision or any other act by us to join into the family of God, to belong to the faith. It was Paul's belief and teaching that we die to ourselves, which includes our old ways and our old values and our selfish desires, when we receive salvation through faith by believing in Jesus Christ who died for us, we are justified. We are made right with God by faith in Jesus' act of salvation. And when we come to faith, we come alive in new ways by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thus, we are no longer guided by our own values or our own ways, but by those of God through the Holy Spirit. If we believe this, then it is ever so important for us to be aligned with the Holy Spirit of God, to discern the values of God, the ways of God, and the ways in which we are to live. It is one thing to recognize that we only live by the grace of the Holy Spirit, and it's another to participate with God and allow the Spirit to guide and direct us, to shape our lives. Can you imagine if every person was guided by the Holy Spirit, how the work of God in the world would be accomplished? Sounds like heaven, doesn't it? Exactly. And that's what we want. Like we pray in the Lord's Prayer every Sunday, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So how do we know if we are being led by the Spirit? Can scripture help us to identify the spirit at work within us? Well, Paul can help us with that too. He does so by listing a list of fruit of the spirit in Galatians 5. You probably know them, and I'll reiterate them for you. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Paul offers examples of what living with the fruit of the Spirit looks like. For example, gentleness is not just a character trait of the Christian. It's how a person living by the Spirit confronts and restores an offender into reconciliation. Forgiveness is done through gentleness. Paul goes on in chapter 6 to explain as he writes to the people of the church about carrying one another's burdens, comparing self to others, and perseverance. This is all in chapter 6. Do you see how reading and studying the scripture can help us in setting and maintaining our values so that we are aligned with God's values through the Holy Spirit? If you were to take a look at your life right now, what would you see? Are your values God's values? Are your ways the ways of love? Or is it time to come before God for a reset? Some might say it's a time for a come to Jesus moment. Are we utilizing the gifts of the Spirit in our day-to-day -day living? The ones I just mentioned, love, joy, peace, and the self-control at the end. Or should we be seeking new ways with the Spirit to offer love and address the needs of others in our ever-changing world? Are we in our discipleship seeking the Spirit to ensure that we are living out our faith with God's values and utilizing the guidance and wisdom of the Spirit? If we were all guided by the Spirit, how would our relationships look? Our relationship with God and our relationships with others. If all were being led by the Spirit, imagine how God could work in us to transform the world. Imagine if we were to follow Jesus' words and live in love as he described when asked what was the greatest commandment. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with 
with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor, your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. This is where we start our reset. We can follow all the laws and the wisdom of the prophets and walk a life of faith with Jesus as our Lord and Savior if we surrender our ways to God's ways. If we obediently make God's values our values. Let us follow the Spirit in love and grace so the love of God, the redemption of the Son, Jesus the Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit can lead us into the fullness of life that Jesus speaks of today and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we come before you today in gratitude for all our many blessings. We thank you, the, thank you for the gift of this life and the love and fellowship of those around us. We thank you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus, who came to redeem us and welcome us into a covenantal, loving relationship with you, Father, Son, and Spirit. This day we come with a desire to live by your Spirit and not our own. We come seeking to reset our values to align with your will, so we might abide together in love and grace. May the words of the scriptures come alive in our hearts, in our minds and spirits, that we might learn and grow into true disciples of Jesus Christ, willing and able to build each other up and encourage each other in love. Gracious God, too often we live for ourselves and not for you and for others. Help us to be guided by your spirit to reset our values so that we might bear fruit for your glory. Show us the way to live under your values, not our own values and not the values of the world. Use our lives to serve those who desperately need your goodness, your mercy, and your love. For we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now come to a time in our service where we sing our doxology and thank and praise God for the abundance of the people of God as we hear. Let us sing.
Let us receive God's love and strength to follow God's statutes in righteous living as we follow the example of Jesus. Offer forgiveness, compassion, grace, and mercy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.